So as discussed last time, this is just going to be the um, uh, basically the installation, the build and installation instructions for this RTTR package, which we're going to download, uh, compile, link and integrate um, into our uh, current program. This is this video, like I said, just the installation instructions. So that this one, this is the reference for how it was done um, for when if you want to play along and you have to do it yourself. Um, so first thing you need to do is download the package. I've downloaded the Windows source and I've just dumped it in the folder. I've dumped it here in the folder with the rest of our stuff. So I'm just going to, won't be able to see this, but I'll just unzip that. Uh, just unzip that into a folder there. So that is our, that's just the download exactly as it was for, from the, um, from it's from rtt.org download. And the installation instructions are here. So basically we're just gonna follow these instructions and see if we can get it to build. Um, so it needs to be built with built with a compiler. So, and this example is Visual Studio 2013, but we're using 2015. You might be using something else. So um, let's just uh, in here, Let's make a new folder for, uh, let's just call it VS 2015. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll copy our existing, this is our make file for um, our current project. I'll copy that because it's going to be very similar because this is using CMake and we're using CMake. So that, that really helps us out a bit. Uh, I'll just paste that in there. And we pretty much want to do, according to the instructions, same thing, uh, except we don't want 2013 and we need the path to the source. So this is all the same. Um, let's just build it in this folder here. Um, and the path is just back one. Let's get rid of that. So it's pretty much the same thing um, we did before there. Can we do a, yeah, that we can do it. Let's just go to that folder. It was in RTTR, wasn't it? Uh, and we want to call make 2000. So this is just going to, this is just going to build it. Oh, actually is there, I should check the instructions because, um, that's how we build it. Um, but it has some of these config options that we might want to set. So we've got build static, build as a static library, build with runtime limits, build with our RTTI, which is C plus plus is RTTI build benchmarks. We don't want those. So let's, before we run it, let's just go in and customize some of those which are in here, I think. So, so yeah, so we've got a bunch of options that we can set in CMake. So uh, build the dynamic shared library. We don't want that. I'm going to do it as a static library. Uh, we don't want the unit tests because we're not going to unit test it. We're going to assume it's been unit tested. Uh, build as a static library. I do want a static library. Uh, don't look against static runtime. Uh, we might as well leave that RTTI on the C++ when it probably maybe internally uses that for something. Um, enable us to build benchmarks. We want benchmark. Build examples. We don't want the examples because we're going to do our own stuff. We don't want the documentation. Some of these require extra programs to be installed, so we're not, we don't want any of them. So we want the installer. Um, Build installer, build package. We don't want package, I think. And you can use speaking by headers, and the rest of it should be just about the documentation that we're not building. So hopefully that's good enough. Um, and let's see what was the name of our. It was make vs 2015.bat. So again, if you're using a different uh, development environment like Xcode or code blocks or something and then, then you do this for your environment but i'm doing it for visual studio 2015 you could be in 17 by now or, or even in an earlier version depending on what you're doing um let's just see if this works so i think this is just putting together uh it's putting together an install folder let's see what the instructions say 
so you build the target install, this will create, oh, so this is built a Visual Studio uh, project that we can then build to build the like static library, I think, um, which has been put in, in this folder here where we, we put the thing. So we've got an RTTR solution in there. So I'll just open that up. So th there might be other ways of making this build or integrating your project, but I'm just following the instructions as they are. So, so this is not our current uh, tutorials. This is just the RTTI, uh, RTTR core. Um, we've got the install there. So let's just rebuild everything. I think this takes a little while because uh, by default, it hasn't been set up to do multi-threaded um, compiling, which nowadays you probably would want. Um, and as you can see, this computer's got this many cores on it, but it's probably only building on one. It's not even utilizing the full core to build. So you can get this to build quite a, quite a bit quicker depending on your computer. But it looks like it's working. You just add slash MP in the Microsoft compiler to do multiprocessor compiling. And I think it just looks at how many CPU cores you've got and says, okay, I'll try and use all those. Um, so that's us built. At least that project's built. Um, what did it do? Uh, it made this lib file. Did it build something in there? Might have got this wrong, let's have a look. Uh, have the build target, this will create the install. Did I not build install? Do I have to build that? Maybe build that one, maybe I did it wrong. I'm expecting to see an install folder turn up when it's done. Or well, maybe I turn that off in the options. Let's just see what we get. Not that interesting, is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I just didn't build the right target. So it's made my, it's made this install folder now. And there it is. Install. So that's the thing we're going to link. That's what we're going to link into our project. It's got the, this is just for the debug version, but it's got the, everything's built into a lib and it's got an include file with all the stuff we need to do, well, the includes that we'll get. And it's built this little CMake config that we can use to integrate it into our project. So, uh, let's just see what's next. Um, so we've done that part, we've done the build, we've set our config, we've done the installation. Uh, last step is to, uh, so we need to use the CMake config files. Um, for this, you have to, it says you have to set up an environment variable called rttr.dir, uh, which should contain the path to the installation directory. But I found that because the installation folder is actually, because it's a subfolder, um, inside here, like it's a subfolder in my project. I found that I didn't have to bother doing that when I took the, I mean, I might be wrong. We could try that now, but I found that I didn't have to do that step. So I didn't have to set up a, uh, a windows path or anything. It might be useful to have that, but currently I didn't have it. So, um, then I just add these to the CMake script file. So let's find our CMake script, which is the one for our project. And I need it in the main one, I think. So let's just get rid of that. So down here, uh, find package and target link library. Um, and it was that one, RTTR as static library. That's what we're doing. So it finds the package and then targets it. And, and our project is called Lua Tutorial, not my app. Um, so I think, and I, th I say I think, I think that might Let's build, rebuild our solution. Uh, it's complaining about something there. Uh, 
28 fine package. Could not find the package configuration. Oh, because. Um, RTT config required. Cool. Maybe it does need that. Uh, it's possible it does need that um, thing. I could be wrong then. I, I, when I tried it before, I made it and then I took it out. And uh, I think it does actually need it. So I'm going to add that now. So wait a second. So I just need the full path to my installation folder. Um, where does it say to set it to? Uh, it just says it contains the path to the installation folder. Now, I could be wrong, but on mine, uh, on mine, it was this all the way, this massive path. So, so I'd want that equals that. So I'd want something like that. RTT, I need to set that in my computer options. Just give me one second. I'd be setting it in these, these environment variables. So it was RTT, R -D, and I think you said set it to the install folder. I'm not sure though if they've got this wrong or if the instructions are wrong for this one. And I think also I might have to restart Visual Studio because it can't see this. I don't think you can see that path. So let's restart that project. It's all a bit of messing about. Setting up setting up builds in C++ is a real pain. There's no actual official way of building a C++ project. It's not specified by the language standard. So everything every time you do something, everything's always different. So other languages have sorted this out, but C++ hasn't really done it. Um, so let's see what we get. Oh, it's it's got a different error though. Uh, keyword target link rise has always been used for Lua tutorial. I think actually, yeah, this is another this is a problem with the instructions. So I think what we've got is it's working now. But I'll just get rid of that. Um, because whoever's done this library, is, I think they've used a different version of CMake. Again, this is down to the problem of, um, you know, there not being a real proper way of building C++, like a, an official way for the language. I think I, for this CMake thing, he's got an older version. So I think I've got to put public there. So let's try that. You can see why I want to do this on video, because I want this just to be showing you what I did to make this work. And there it is. So I think... So nothing's really changed in our project, I believe. It doesn't look like it's changed, but we are, if we could just check here, you can kind of see if it's worked. Because if you look at your um, C++ directories, when CMake builds this this um, project, it has to put in all the correct like paths and stuff. So we've actually got the path to that new tutorial now in the include. So hopefully, hopefully I say that is us. We've built we've built that term um, library, and we've included it via CMake. It's just lucky that he's using CMake and we're using CMake, so it's made life a lot easier for us. Um, I would have liked to have done it the way we did the Lua one, which is build our own little CMake thing, but I didn't want to mess about with this project because it was a bit more complicated. But this works, so um, I'm going to do it. So what all we really want to do then? Um, because I've just included the static library and nothing else. Let's just go to tutorial. Let's just see if we can put the really basic, uh, let's just do hello world. Uh, let's just see if we can include this and just do what they're doing here in our project. So I'll probably take this code out, but this will just check that we can do the include. We've not got standard out. Let's just do a uh, let's do a printf hello world. Um, it registers that function and does that build? It's 
not failed. Um, where's the rest of the... Uh, and they're just invoking it there. Whoa, jeez, what did I click? So this is just copying the hello world and this, this is our test to make sure that it works. So that's the include file, a, a random method they've made and up here, let's just see if this works. If this does work, what we're doing is exactly what we said in the last video, which is we're taking the string f and we're using it to invoke a function with no parameters. Um, and that's what we want to be able to do in Lua. So this is why including this is going to be a good thing. So let's just check. And there's hello world. So that was a little bit of messing about, but, and, and that project isn't going to be checked into GitHub. So I'm not going to like copy the whole project in and everything. It'll be up to you to basically follow the instructions in this video to build this for yourself. Um, but that is going to be the instructions on how we've got this library included in here. So we've successfully using it now. Um, in the next video, we're going to see if we can, I'll probably start a new file and get rid of this main stuff that we've done here. And, and we'll start rebuilding the Lua bindings that we've got. And we're going to try and use this to see if we can make a generic binding that can um, pretty much with just a few lines of code, um, like bind lots and lots of different classes. So just for now, I'll just take this out because we don't need the hello world anymore. Um, and we'll do that next time.